good morning good morning good morning i just want to say good morning to your spiritual life good morning to your health good morning to your family good morning to your finances to your business to your career to everything that has to do with you and i want to once again wish you a happy new year amen we just want to bless the name of god for his grace his love his faithfulness and above all his mercy towards us all happy new year once again and i want to thank each and every one of you watching me thank you so much for your love thank you so much for your prayers thank you so much for your encouragement you know we are sons and daughters of love and we will not stop talking about the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the love brought about the coming and the death of Jesus Christ and also the resurrection that has given us a new life in Christ. We cannot stop talking about that love. So today we are going to continue revealing what the Holy Spirit as placed in our hearts regarding the love of God and what is expected of us who say and claim to be children of God. So we're going to be taking a visit to Lazarus and the rich man. We know the story behind Lazarus and the rich man. So we're going to be taking a short visit to see what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us in just that short story Jesus Christ gave. But before then, our proof tests will be taken from the book of John, chapter 21, from verse 15 to 17. John 21, verse 15. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord. Peter replied, you know I love you, then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. 16. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you, then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. 17. A third time, he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hot that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Praise the Lord. Going by what we just read in these three verses, 15, 16, and 17. I think each and every one of you listening and watching me would be asking, why was Jesus repeatedly asking Peter, do you love me? Now that brings me to the topic of this sermon or this short sermon of today. It is titled, The Destiny Helper. Jesus was revealing to Simon Peter his destiny his heavenly mandate here on earth. Jesus Christ was reminding Peter about his destiny. Your destiny is to help, is to feed, is to take care, is to love everyone. And that was why he asked Peter repeatedly. So let us go to the story and continue to unfold the more exemplary explanation regarding this conversation between Peter and Jesus Christ. So using the story of Lazarus and the rich man, we'll probably have a more understanding of what Jesus Christ was trying to tell Peter. Okay, so let's go to the book of Luke chapter 16. And we'll just take a short reading from first from verse 19 to 23. Luke 16, verse 19. Jesus said, There was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen, 
and who lived each day in Lord's reign. Verse 20. At the gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. Verse 21. As Lazarus lay there, longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Verse 22. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23, And he went to the place of the dead. There in torment he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at the side. Praise the Lord. I believe many of us would have come across this story and would have by now assumed the rich man went to hell because he did not help Lazarus. Yes, we're not far from the truth, but that is not the entire revelation. The Holy Spirit is trying to picture out for us who love God. Remember, the Bible or Jesus Christ did not specifically say the rich man was a believer or Lazarus was a believer or an unbeliever. The focal point of this story was not emphasizing on salvation. So Jesus Christ did not say the rich man was a born again or he was a Jew or a Pharisee or whatever. He didn't make mention of anything like that. He only said the rich man and Lazarus. He was emphasizing on one thing. Destiny. I say it again. He was emphasizing on destiny. Lazarus was destined to be a great man, but his destiny helper at that point in time was meant to be the rich man. And the Bible as it is and the way life is, God deliberately placed Lazarus close to the rich man just by the gates of the rich man's house so that his destiny will be fulfilled through the rich man's efforts and obedience to the word of God. What do I mean by the word of God? The love of God. Lazarus was poor, but was not meant to be poor. He had injuries in his legs or in his body, but he was not meant to remain that, in that position. God deliberately humbled him in that state just for the rich man to see him and to have sympathy, compassion on him, and then to fulfill his heavenly mandate by helping Lazarus. But I am sure the rich man was so busy with his business, with his friends, with his luxurious house, influence or affluence. He was so busy with whatever and he paid little or less attention on Lazarus. And also he forgot that as long as he was rich, his wealth was supposed to help Lazarus. But he didn't understand the spiritual significance. So he paid little or no attention to Lazarus. And the Bible said this happened for a long time. And Lazarus was always longing to eat whatever fell from his table. And the dogs of the rich man would come and lick the wounds of Lazarus to show you how irritating and how painful the state of Lazarus was. Yet, the rich man turned a blind eye to his own heavenly mandate, causing Lazarus not to be able to fulfill his destiny here on earth. That was the simple focal point Jesus Christ was trying to reveal through that message. Speaking about destiny, now because the rich man failed to obey the Holy Spirit's voice, Telling him, help this man, show love to this man. He disobeyed the Holy Spirit and then he died. 
Lazarus also died as a result of his ailment and condition. But he ended up where? In the bosom of Abraham. But the rich man died also, but ended up where? In hellfire. Why? Not because maybe he went to church, maybe he, he, he was a Jew, he was a Pharisee, he believed in God, whatever. That was not the reason. But he went to hell because he did not listen to the voice of God, always reminding him to help his neighbor, always reminding him to show love to Lazarus. So why am I saying this today? This is a new year, 2024. We should continue to look inward. Inward, stop looking at people, what they did or did not do. Stop throwing stones, blames at people. Rather look around you and look within yourself. God has given you something that others around you need. It could be money. It could be your time. It could just be your smile. It could just be your attention. It could be your advice. It could be also your prayers. God has given you something that people around you need. And you are always or probably playing a destiny helper's role in the lives of so many people around you. So instead of you focusing so much on things distracting yourself, I want to do this, I want to achieve that, which are not bad, but you should also pay attention to those people God has placed just under your nose, like God placed Lazarus, under the nose of the rich man. By fulfilling your heavenly mandate, like Jesus Christ was telling Peter, then you will be successful here on earth and in heaven. This year, 2024, we should pay more attention on others. Value others more than yourself. Show concern on others. I know we're in the end time and men are lovers of themselves, but we are children of God. We cannot be counted as the men of the world. And I believe that just by obeying this simple rule of love, you will become a success in your generation. And when you do what God wants you to do, remember in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 2, Jesus Christ taught his disciples how to pray. And he said, let your will, O Lord, be done here on earth as it is done in heaven. And the will of God in heaven that we always pray about here on earth is for each and every one of us to love each other, to live in peace with one another. So I encourage you, I urge you to live loving yourself. Encourage each one another in love. God has given each and every one of us something that someone needs. Pay attention on others. And then you will be a destiny helper to people, multitude of people, regardless of your present state, present condition or situation, you will become a destiny helper to people. So I just round up by encouraging us once more that the message Jesus Christ told Peter in that book of John 21, 15 to 17 is an extension to us as well, who love God, who claim to love Jesus Christ. Be a destiny helper. And as you do this, may the peace of God, may the grace of God be upon your life, be upon your family, be upon your career, be upon your spiritual growth in the mighty name of Jesus. May you continue to excel in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the knowledge of God continue to grow in your hearts. May you not continue to walk in darkness and allow Satan to deceive you. May you continue to walk in the light of God. The light of God will shine over you. And we remove every form of darkness in your life in this year 2024. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.